The story of Sniper Elite 4 is about the main character discovering and eventually stopping a Nazi secret weapon that has been sinking Allied ships. The question is, is this Nazi super weapon real? Did the Nazis have the world's first guided missile? Yes, it was the world's first mass produced missile. This weapon is called the HS-293 and was actually used during World War II. The HS-293 A1 was the world's first mass produced guided missile. There were several variants of the HS-293, but they weren't mass produced or even used in combat. So we're going to ignore the experimental variants and focus on the main produced version which was the A1. The HS-293 is a German World War II radio controlled glide bomb with a rocket engine. The idea was for the bomb to be deployed against targets where precision would be key for mission success. Ships are very hard to hit with high altitude bombing with conventional bombs, as the Allies found out in the Battle of Midway. The Battle of Midway was the decisive turning point in the war between Imperial Japan and the United States. During the battle, heavy American bombers including B-17s attempted to destroy Japanese ships from high altitude. No aircraft based on Midway scored any hits on enemy ships during the battle. So yeah, high altitude bombing doesn't work. Dive bombers are more successful at attacking enemy ships, but they put themselves in massive danger by flying a very predictable flight path when attacking ships. Also, their proximity in these attack runs to ships bristling with anti-aircraft guns does prove slightly bothersome. A solution to this problem would be a bomb that could be guided to its target from a bomber flying high up and out of range of the ship's anti-aircraft guns. Tests for the HS-293 took place in late 1940, with the first mass-produced version being made in 1942. The missile contained a 300 kg explosive warhead that was designed to explode on impact with an enemy ship. To extend the range of the missile, a rocket booster slung underneath the missile was used to increase speed for around 10 seconds, which was when the rocket then ran out of fuel. When the booster ran out of fuel, the missile would then be unpowered, gliding to its target. The higher the plane when dropping the bomb, the further it could go. At 7,200 feet, the bomb had a range of around 2.2 kilometers. At 30,000 feet, the bomb had a range of just over 8.5 kilometers. The bomb was to be guided to its target by the bombardier by using a joystick. The inputs the bombardier made would be acted out on the control surfaces of the missile. For day operations, several flares would be attached to the missile so that the bombardier could track it more easily. At night, an electric lamp would be used in place of the flares. To deploy the missile, the plane that was carrying it would fly at a set speed. This speed varied from plane to plane, so for this example, let's use the Dornier DO217. The Dornier DO217 would fly at around 400 km per hour, travelling at around 30 to 60 degrees off to the side of its intended target. After the missile was dropped, the plane would then slow down and maintain its heading and altitude. The bombardier would then do his best to get the missile onto the target. The time to impact could have been anywhere up to around 100 seconds. The HS-293 was intended to be used against unarmoured ships, such as merchant vessels and troop transports. The other mass-produced guided missile that the Germans made was the Fritz X. The Fritz X was to be used on heavier targets such as battleships. It had a hardened nose and a delayed fuse on the explosives so that it could smash through the top deck of a ship and detonate once deep inside. Unlike the HS-293, the Fritz X was unpowered, so it was truly a glide bomb. The term glide bomb gives the impression that these missiles were slow, but don't let that term fool you. The Fritz X could reach supersonic speeds. It actually had to be designed to be slower than the sound barrier so it wouldn't tear itself apart or over penetrate its target. Around 1,400 Fritz X missiles were made. Although the HS-293 is most known for its anti-ship role near Italy, there are also reports that they were used in Normandy to take out bridges to slow down the Allies advance. There are also reports that it was used on the Eastern Front against the Soviets where it was deployed to take out bridges in Poland to slow down the Soviets advance. Between 1942 and 1944, around 1,000 of these missiles were made. Their effectiveness started to decrease when the Allies gained air superiority in the skies, thus preventing bombers getting close to Allied ships. In the end though, Allied radar jamming put an end to the German glide bomb's usefulness. It could be pretty difficult to steer a bomb onto a target when you can't get a signal from the bombardier's controls to the bomb's control surfaces. There were plans though by the Germans to counter this jamming through new developments. 
One such development was a wire-guided version of the missile. Wire-guided is exactly what you think it is. A wire trails from the missile from where it launched. Instead of sending the signal via radio waves, the signal will be sent through the wire, and it would be impossible to jam the signals that are sent this way, unlike radio waves which can be easily jammed. There was even a version of the missile intended to be TV guided. A camera is placed inside the nose or just underneath the nose of the missile and that camera will send a live feed to the bombardier. This would make the bomb much more easier to guide onto its target. There were also plans to mount the HS-293 on the Arado 234 jet bomber. The Arado was capable of outrunning allied aircraft. This would have allowed it to have targeted ships in allied controlled skies. This plan didn't get out of the design stage. The Germans weren't the only country experimenting with radio controlled bombs and missiles. The Americans had also been working on their own bombs which could be guided to a target. The developments by America led from remote controlled planes called aerial torpedoes to a missile which could track anything that produced radio waves, for example a ship. This missile was called the ASM N2 Bat. This bomb was definitely an upgrade over the American TV missiles and also their pigeon guided bomb. That last one isn't a joke. Seriously, they were trying to train pigeons to guide bombs to a target. A pigeon would be inside the bomb and it will steer to the target by pecking at a screen with its beak. But that's a story for another day. Around 3,000 of these BAT missiles were produced before the end of World War II. These missiles had limited success, although they did actually see some combat against Japan in late 1945. Well, there you have it. There were actually missiles that were used in the Second World War and in surprisingly high numbers. If you like this video, I'm going to ask you to take a look at my top 5 weird Nazi wonder weapon planes that actually flew. Or maybe you would prefer wood power tanks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, or I'll break your f***ing legs.